So just like merge short was built around this merge primitive, which allowed us, so it's kind of interesting. So in merge sort, merge allowed us to combine sorted arrays together, but that's the primitive that we use to build that uh, recursive sorting algorithm. So on some level, merge sort, what it did is it, it broke the array down into smaller and smaller pieces, and then it was actually kind of doing the sorting on the way up. With quick sort, sort of the opposite, but we still have this poor primitive that we're going to use. And in quick sort, the core primitive is different. It's something called partitioning. What a partition does is it takes an array and it chooses a value and then it divides the array into two parts. The uh, items that are before the value or smaller than the value and the items that are greater than the value. And what we want when we're done is we want, uh, you know, the if you think about where the value ends up in the array, we want all of the items to the left of the value to be smaller and all the items to the right of the value to be larger. We actually don't care about what the values what order the values are in, in each side, but we do care about the fact that, you know, all the smaller values should be on one side of the partition, all the larger values should be on the other, or larger than or equal to should be on the other side of the partition. Okay, so let's walk through how that's gonna work. So here's our array. Now, whenever we do a partition, we have to pick a value that we're gonna partition the array around. This is known as the pivot. Not sure why, uh, but that's what it's called. So the idea is that we choose a pivot value. Now, this is, you know, sort of an arbitrary choice. It turns out to have some important performance implications. Um, but for now, let's just imagine that we choose the, uh, the first value as the pivot. Um, this is a tricky process. This algorithm is probably one of the trickier pieces of imperative code that we're going to look at. But it turns out that what we can do is we can actually implement partition in place. So we can implement a partition algorithm that divides the array properly um, so that the pivot ends up in the right spot Everything to the left of the pivot is smaller. Everything to the right is greater. So let's walk, let's walk through how to do that. And then you guys get to write the code for this on a homework problem. Okay, so let's imagine that we, we choose six as our pivot value. And now what we do is we go through the rest of the array. And the, the trick is, if we find a value that's smaller than six, we need to get it to the left. Um, and so what we do is we, we keep track of where the pivot currently is, or kind of where the boundary between these two parts of the array is. And if we find a value that's smaller, we swap it with that boundary value. Okay, so we look at five, and in this case, five is this value, and so uh, we, we, we don't do anything. Now we go to seven, okay? So seven is greater than the pivot value. And so now, we, so, so again, we're keeping track of where the boundary is. So right now, the, the, we've only looked at two values, but we found one value that was smaller than pivot, that's five. Uh, we found one value that was larger than the pivot, that's seven. And so the index of kind of where that boundary is, is, is seven. And I'll show you how we're gonna use that right now, because now we found another value that's smaller than the pivot. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap it with the location of the smallest value, uh, sorry, the, the, the boundary location. And then we also increment the boundary location by one because I've just put a smaller value into the smaller part of the, uh, of the array. Okay, so now I look at four. I'm gonna do the same thing with four. Uh, four is smaller than the pivot. The pivot is six, so I swap them again. Now I look at 11. 11 is bigger than the pivot. I don't do anything, I just keep going. Now I look at eight. Eight is bigger than the pivot. I don't do anything, I just keep going. Now I look at negative one. Again, negative one is smaller than six, so I'm gonna swap negative one with the current location of the boundary and then bump the boundary forward. Now when I'm done, I'm almost done here. It's not quite, right? Because six, which is my pivot value, is not in the right spot yet. And so there's this one last step that I perform where now what I'm gonna do is I swap six. And, th and this is a little bit tricky. I don't swap six with the current location of the boundary because that would mean that 11 would end up on the left side. So instead, I swap six with kind of the, the previous location. So I swap six with negative one. And so you'll, you'll see now when I'm done, what do I have? So my pivot value was six. I chose the first value in the array as the pivot. That's an arbitrary choice. I could have chosen any value. Uh, I chose the first value in the array as the pivot. What have we accomplished? So all the values to the right of the pivot are larger. All the values to the left of the pivot are smaller. Now, you might wonder like, why does this matter? Okay, um, because what have we done? When we started this process, we had an array of size eight that was unsorted. 
Now, we have an array of size three that's unsorted and an array of size four that's unsorted. So we've created smaller subproblems. And here's the thing that's critical about quicksort. I can sort the array of size three and the array of size four separately because I know that there's no interaction between those two sorts. There's no values to the right of the pivot in that array of size three that contains 11, eight, and seven that belong in the sorted array of size four that I need to finish on the left side of the pivot, right? So um, you'll also notice something interesting, which is that through this process, the pivot value ends up in the right position. So I've actually sorted a very, very tiny part of the array. Six is in the right spot because I don't know what I have to do to the right of six to finish off that small part of the array, and I don't have, know what I have to do to the left of six to finish off that small part of the array, but six is in the right position. Okay, um, so let's walk through this again. This, this, this is tricky. You know, I'm not going to lie, and it'll take you a few times to, to work this out on the homework problem. So let's go through it again. So it starts by picking a pivot value. Now, again, the pivot value can be anywhere. Uh, we'll uh, typically pivot around the first value in the array that we're trying to partition. I pick six, and I start going through the rest of the array. So, so for now, I leave six alone. I need to know what the value is because I need to compare the values in the array with my pivot value, but I'm not moving the pivot value around until the very end. And now what I'm doing is as I'm going, I'm keeping the location of the boundary between the values that are smaller and the values that are larger. If all the values were larger, that, you know, that boundary just keeps moving to the right. So when I find a larger value, right, um, sorry, the boundary just stays put. So when I, when I find a larger value, I don't do anything to the boundary. When I find a smaller value, I've got to move it into the smaller. Uh, so essentially, if I find a value that's smaller than six, the size of the area that stores the smaller values has to grow by one. And so I have to shift that boundary over to the right. I also need to get the value into that part. And that's why I do the swap. All right, so five is smaller than six. And so five, I, I, I put five in. Seven is not. And so I, I leave the boundary location alone. Now, so, so again, at this point, I've got two smaller parts of the array that I've looked at. I have one of size one that stores five and a second of size one that stores seven. Five is smaller than the pivot, seven is bigger than the pivot. And that location that's shown on the diagram is kind of like uh, points at the first value in the larger part of the, 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 the array, right? The, the part of the array that stores larger values. Now I get to three, so three is small. So I've got to do something about three. I need to move it into the smaller part of the array, the array that's stored in the smaller part of the values. And so what I can do here, because of the, the way that I'm storing the, the boundary location, is I just swap it with seven, right? And so that has the effect of moving seven to the right to make space for three in the smaller part of the array and also getting three into the smaller part. When I, when I do this, so along with doing the swap, I also bump that boundary location over one position. Okay, um, so now I look at four. Four again is smaller than the pivot, which is six. So I do the same thing. I swap it with the uh, value pointed at by the boundary location and I move the boundary location to the right. I've got to move the boundary location to the right because the part of the array that stores the values that are smaller than six just got a little bigger, right? And so I've got to make space for it. When I get to 11, don't need to do anything. Just keep going. When I get to eight, same thing. Bigger than six, it can stay put. Negative one, smaller than six, same process. Swap it with the value that's pointed, you know, the value that's pointed at by the location of the boundary, which is seven. Uh, because seven is bigger than six, I can swap it to the right because it will still end up in the part of the array that's bigger than six. So I swap it with negative one, bump the boundary over. When I get to the end of the array, I swap the pivot location into one before where my boundary location is, and that completes the partition. So again, a, a, a delicate, tricky, fiddly little piece of imperative code for you to work on a homework problem, uh, but the building block for our quicksort algorithm.